Today I'm going to show you how to set up your EG4 batteries with the Solark 15K inverter. So first things first, you'll need to make sure that you have your negative and positive cables plugged into your battery as well as your Solark's terminals. This will provide power to the Solark and then you will need to plug in a straight through pinned ca communication cable from the CAN bus on the Solark to the CAN port on your EG4 battery. Now do note the LifePower 4 does not have a CAN port. You will need to use the communication hub for this feature. Now for the dip switches, we will want to set all of them up. So all of them up like that. We'll go ahead and close this before we turn anything on to be safe. Don't want to get shocked. And now we will go ahead and turn our battery on. Again, you'll want your dip switches to be in the all up position on your wall mount or LL battery. Now on this screen, you will see that we default to the EG4 slash Lux protocol. Go to your settings can communication, and then on here, you will want to select one, two, three, four, five, six for the password, press the enter button, and then you'll see SLK is the protocol we want to select, SLK for Solark, that's setting three, press back, and of course, since we haven't power cycled our inverter, we'll still see EG4 Lux Power as our selected CAN protocol. So we'll go ahead and turn that off, come back up here, now we're going to put the first dip switch down. So we got down and then the rest of them will be up. From here, we can go ahead and turn our battery back on. And now we can go to the Solark. So first things first, you'll want to make sure that the on button is pushed in. Then we will go to the settings in the top right and battery setup. Now from here, we will turn on BMS lithium battery and we want the brand to be set to zero, zero. It's a very important brand is set to zero, zero or the communication will not work. We can also do use battery percent state of charge here once you have the lithium communication set up. We'll go to li-bat info and we will see this screen. If any of this information looks incorrect to you, you may have the incorrect protocol selected on your battery, especially if you left it to default EG4. Lux power, I know one of the most common things for that is that the nominal capacity doesn't show up because the information the solar is looking for is in a different order with a different protocol. We'll press escape here and you'll notice that if you are on lithium setting one or two or anything other than zero zero, you'll be greeted with a different screen here. This screen means that it's not actually communicating and is looking for RS-485 protocol. So make sure that you're set to zero, zero, and everything will work like a charm. Now, this also goes for the LL batteries. So we have a stack of four EG4 LLs. Go in here. Again, you wanna use the CAN port here, not the RS-485. I already have these set to the Solark protocol. And on here, we'll see that our nominal cap is raised to 400 amps. Our charge current limit is 200, discharge 400, perfect. One thing to note with the LL batteries is if you had to change your protocol on your master battery during the setup of the system and you don't do it all at once, your master battery may only communicate the first couple of batteries that are online to the Solark. What you'll need to do is power cycle your master battery only if you don't see all of your batteries showing up. Because sometimes if you have your master battery communicating with Solark before the rest of your batteries are online, it will not catch the rest of the batteries. It won't know to look for them. So make sure if you see that you reset the master battery. Communication also works pretty seamlessly with the outdoor wall mount battery. Simply slot it into the RS-485 slash communication or CAN communication port, set your protocol to Solark similar to the way we did it with our indoor wall mount. And you'll see on here, it has the same 
parameters. We got 200 amp hours, and then of course 200, 200 for charge and discharge. It's important to note that with a single wall mount battery, your Solark's charge and discharge outputs from the battery will be limited to about 10 kilowatts instead of 12 because the 200 amp BMS on the batteries does actually push put that limit down uh, as far as the maximum output that it can uh, it can output. So it's important to note that uh, if you're saying that you're not able to get you know full maximum capacity from output of your Soul Arc. Now, one more thing to check. This is a very common um, question that we get as well: is if the Soul Arc is in time of use. Sometimes your battery will not charge or discharge when you want it to. Now, this just is the way that the time of use works on the Solark. If you're very familiar with the settings that you have here, uh, you'll only be able to operate it within those parameters. So um, if you aren't super familiar with the way that works, um, you know, you don't want to use time of use setup when you're initially testing it to make sure everything is working properly. And it's as simple as that. All you have to do to set up your Soul Arc with your EG4 battery are the steps that we follow. We always recommend putting it in closed loop communication as that has been tested rigorously by our team for safety and reliability, as with most of the third party inverters that we have protocols for. If you have systems set up with an EG4 battery and a third party system like this, let us know. We'd love to see stuff like that and how we can better improve our systems integrations everywhere. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.